What is up everybody? This is the 99th episode. 99 days in a row of vlogging uploads. Today I wanted to talk about the setup that I'm using and I've been using it for about 30 days, give or take about a month, and that is the Canon 60D Mark II with the 24 millimeter 1.4 L lens, the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus, and then now I'm using the new, this new Manfrotto tripod that Mike Panetta got me for my birthday last week. So I wanna go over each item, sort of my pluses, my minuses about each one, and then we'll talk a little bit about what tomorrow's video is gonna bring with the 100th episode. So let's go. So first let's talk, we'll go from the bottom up. Let's talk about the tripod. I'll leave a link for everything down in the description below. I'm not 100% sure on the name of this tripod. It doesn't say it on the tripod. It's a Manfrotto. It's one that I hadn't seen before. And like I said, last week, last Wednesday, one week ago, I showed it off because that's when Mike sent it to me. So I've taken the tripod off. This is the tripod right here. The things that I actually really like about it is that it has the quarter inch screw at the top, whereas the Joby Pod, you have a plate, you have to put the plate on and you take the plate on and off. And there's always that worry of the plate letting loose from the tripod and then dropping it. With this one, you're actually screwing the tripod into the camera, which I like a lot. It makes me feel a lot more secure. Build quality on it leaves a little bit to be desired because it's pretty much, it's all plastic except for these legs, it makes it really lightweight. The actual weight difference between this and the Joby Pod has gotta be a lot. I can feel it by just holding. The grip is good for me. I have large hands though. If you had smaller hands, it would probably be an issue. I like that you have the extensions to where you can get the tripod to stick up a little bit more. That being said, I wish that this span here wasn't so much. I wish you could actually do something more like this every once in a while. There actually is two positions, but it's this and then pretty much flat. So I wish there was this one, this one, and then like an in like down to give you like some real height on it. But that's sort of nitpicking really. Other than that, the ball head works really well. It locks into place really, really well. So overall, I love this. I would choose this over the Gorilla Pod probably every day. There is some some instances, like I said, to get the, the camera higher up. I wish that this went higher like the Joby Pod does, but if you've been watching the videos over these past hundred, I've been using a Joby Pod since the very beginning, just different iterations of it, and there's been failures with every single one where I'll have it set up and then you can see the camera sliding down or it's actually fell a few times and actually camera's fallen. So I don't have much confidence in the Gorilla Pod anymore. I will still be using the Gorilla Pod, but this will definitely be my go-to. All right, so let's talk about the lens. Again, this is the 24 millimeter 1.4 Canon L version and it is fantastic lens. It's sharp. The bokeh on it is amazing. I mean, it's just ridiculous amount of light that gets let into this aperture being at 1.4. I'll hit the negatives first. For video, it's very loud or pretty loud when it focuses. I can hear it a lot while I'm doing it. I, I, I don't hear it that much in the edits because of my voice, but I can hear it and I know that if I was doing other things that this would not be my lens of choice. That being said, when it comes to the quality that you get from it, it's super sharp. The bokeh is ridiculously good. The low light is fantastic because of the 1.4 aperture. It lets a lot of light in. Very, very nice. But if I had to choose, this would be a great lens for photography. I wouldn't call it a great lens for video. Personally, I would rather have a zoom lens, especially when it comes to vlogging, because a lot of the vlogs that I do, on top of just being the talking head like this, I'll flip the camera around and want to show you something, and I like having the 24 to 105, although it's an f4, I like having that, that ability to zoom in to 105 and show you guys something. Uh, in yesterday's video, I showed you guys some dandelions on a neighbor's lawn, and I wish I had the 105 to just sort of zip in and show you guys a little bit better. You can adjust many of the hearing settings. I did not ask for you. Siri all up in my videos. It's like Puff Daddy. Don't want to don't have to worry about the executive producer trying to be all in the video, all on the record, dancing, coming to death row. 
Do I like this lens? Yes. Do I like it for the price? I believe it's like $1,600, $1,700 or $1,500. I think this lens would be great for landscape photography, real estate. I think there's, this lens is a very, very good lens. But just talking strictly for vlogging, I would rather have some zoom range on my lens. So I'm gonna be switching back to the 24 to 105 soon because I'm gonna be sending this kit back to B&H. Overall, it's a great lens, but I would not recommend it for vlogging at least for me. So instead of hitting the camera, let's jump up to the microphone. The microphone, this is the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. I have to say, I really don't have too many complaints with it. The battery seems to last forever. I think in the past, since I've had it in mid-December, I'm pretty sure I've only charged it two times, maybe three times, but that's just ridiculous. It's, it's rechargeable with via micro USB. You can actually take it out and use two AA batteries if for some reason those run out. I've honestly had no issues with this at all. The only things that I would change is I wish it was smaller, obviously, because it's huge. I think right now it, it's about as long as my lens is. It looks like a freaking blimp on the top of my camera. I'm not a huge fan of how Rode has Rode plastered along the side of it. I would rather that not be there as well, but again, that's getting into nitpicky stuff. The only thing that I've changed is I've taken the cable that came with it and I took the, the coiled red cable from the video, the little micro microphone that a lot of vloggers use. I actually took that off of that microphone and put it on this one just so it was a little bit tighter and I didn't have to wrap it around a few different times with the one that it came with. Quality, audio quality is fantastic. The mounts are great on it. I don't get any shaking or any vibration noise back feeding through the camera. The only complaints is I wish it was smaller. I wish Rode didn't put their branding huge along the side. Other than that, that's it. It's a fantastic microphone. It's expensive. Pretty much anything, everything that we're gonna be talking about today is super expensive except for the tripod. And that I think is a huge value for what you're getting. Okay, so let's get to the star of the show the 6D Mark II from Canon. I honestly don't have anything negative to say about this camera. People say, oh, it doesn't have 4K. That's not an issue with me. The only two things I think that I've heard negative people talk about is the lack of 4K and the lack of a headphone jack. Two things that do not bother me at all. For me, vlogging is 1080, just because of the crop factor of the other cameras that I have. With my 5D Mark IV, the crop factor on the 4K is too much. I think 1080 is perfectly fine for vlogging. We've went through this in a few other videos, so I'm not gonna rehash all that. That being said, having the external monitor is beyond nice. Uh, as you could see from yesterday's video in the morning, when I filmed, I actually set up the camera. I had it in my hand, but I could actually see where the sun was behind my head. So every once in a while, I would bring it around a hair and actually get sun flares, and I think it looked fantastic. That's something that I couldn't have done with the 5D Mark IV, I mean, I could have done it, but it would have been on accident because I am not able to frame my shot. That being said, I do like sometimes not having it because I catch myself a lot looking at it. I've been getting better with it over the past month, not focusing on it as much, but it's definitely something that is very, very nice to have. And I really, really wish my vlogging setup would have this. But again, this is all gonna be going back to B&H soon. I'll be back to the 5D Mark IV and I will not have this ability to set myself up uh, and frame out everything that I would like. So let's get to the bright spots of this. It's starting to rain a lot more, so now you're gonna be here in the rain. I really like the way this lighting looks, so I'm not gonna change. We're gonna wait for the rain. Other than what I've already spoke about, it has 60 frames per second for slow-mo, just like my 5D Mark IV, so I like that. I keep the two, this one has two custom settings on the dial. I keep one for when I record like this, which is 24 frames per second, and when I have another one, the C2, I keep it 60 frames per second for doing slow-mo. So I have all my settings set, white balance, all that, so I can quickly switch between C1 and C2 to do slow-mo or do regular footage. That's an awesome feature. That's in my 5D Mark IV as well. I think I have three on the 5D Mark IV. The dual pixel autofocus, as you can tell, is ridiculous. I'm watching the square just following my face around. The only time that comes in where it's sort of a pain in the butt is when you have something and you try to put it in front of you. Well, it works really well with my hand, but if you have something smaller, 
it doesn't want to grab focus if your face like that is in the frame too much. But I mean, really, we're talking about it being too good autofocus. So the autofocus is fantastic. Of course, this goes without saying, but color on a Canon camera to me is second to none. It's the best in the industry. Canon's color science is just leaps and bounds above everyone else. The overall body is nice and light. So you have a full frame sensor for vlogging. This, this camera comes in at what, like $1,800 or $1,900 without a lens. I think that's a great value for what it is. If you can afford it, it's great. Uh, I don't think it's the best vlogging setup for some people. I think a lot of people like a smaller cameras, uh, like the like we just talked about the M50 the other day. So yeah, so that's about it. That's everything about my setup that I'm using right now that I love and that I dislike. But overall, this is to me the best vlogging setup you could have, minus the lens. I would put the 24 to 105 on here instead of the 24 millimeter. So the 60D Mark II, 24 to 105, the Manfrotto tripod, and the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus is probably the greatest vlogging setup that I could come up with using a DSLR. The best vlogging setup for me. Look at that low light. This is the only thing you're seeing is like a, what is that, a 32? 37 inch screen. I mean, come on. Okay, so anyways, let's start talking about the 100th episode of the vlog and what that's gonna bring. 